Can you people hear me? The audio likes it? Translator likes it? <coughs> Muy bien. OK. Um, hi, everybody. Um, if you want to move closer, <laughs> there's room at the front. Um, so I'm going to talk about Mozilla AppMaker, uh, which is a project that we are launching in Alpha this week. Uh, <coughs> control get access to express their opinion. <clears throat> so for the internet to have the kind of impact that we think it should have in the world, we need to be able to allow everybody to create on the mobile world. And so I think we can. Currently, the mobile ecosystem is really for a few players, for game companies, for people who have large budgets who can make high quality mobile apps, for people who are just very, very good um, advanced developers, and for people who control these systems, whether it's the people who control the app stores, the people who set the policies, those kinds of things. There's many people who are not able to contribute to the mobile ecosystem. Uh, in general, civil society, small governments, nonprofits have a much harder time working on the mobile web. Uh, people who are just beginners, uh, it's actually quite a bit harder to create a mobile app than it is to create a web page. And anybody who wants to challenge authority has a harder time doing that on mobile than they do on the desktop internet. <clears throat> and so we want every developer to be able to make a mobile app. You've heard about this before from Mozilla. Uh, you heard about it yesterday from a keynote. <clears throat> this is why we're doing things like Firefox OS. This is how we're pushing the web to be strong on mobile. This is why we want there to be APIs for the web on mobile. And so I think with these efforts, we do think that every developer will be able to make mobile apps. But can we do more? Is that where we should stop? Um, one person I like to think about, I call Sophia. She's a 15-year-old girl. She lives in the suburbs. She likes fashion. She's creative. She has ambitions to do stuff, but she doesn't know how to do it. She likes using her phone. She spends a lot of time on her phone with her friends. And she d probably doesn't even realize that she could make things for her, her phone. <clears throat> and so one of the things that um, we in the technology world have tended to do is to say, oh, you should become a web developer. <clears throat> but the web stack, the amount of technology that you need to learn to make a mobile app, 
is actually very, very high. You need to learn HTML, you need to learn CSS, you need to learn JavaScript, you need to figure out servers, you need to figure out data issues, you need to figure out how to use services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's actually very hard to be a very good app developer. And so, could Sophia learn web development? At some point, yes. But how do we get her to do the first step? How do we get her interested? And how do we get her to think that she can create an app? <clears throat> if that first step is too hard, if it's too hard to go from just consuming the mobile phone to thinking that you can create for the mobile phone, then most people will fail and most people will walk away. So if, it, if it's too hard to learn the technology, if it's not satisfying enough, if it takes long, if you have to spend months learning, most people will never get to feel like they can create for the mobile phone. And that makes me sad. It doesn't have to be this way. In fact, I think that anyone should be able to make an app. Not everyone will make the same quality apps. There will always be professional apps and amateur apps, good apps and bad apps. But everyone should feel like they can create for their mobile phone. And so our approach is um, really inspired by games. We think that if you look at the people playing StarCraft, they're playing an incredibly complicated game. But the beginning is very simple. And then the next step is very simple. And then the next step is very simple. And over time, people develop amazing skills to manage very complex systems because they learned it very progressively. We want to do the same thing for mobile app development. In particular, we want people from nothing to have made an app in five minutes. Of course, it'll be a very simple app. But the point is, if you can get people to feel like they actually made that app, they will be interested, they will want to do more. <clears throat> and then the other thing is, people think that to create an app, you start from scratch. Almost never, that's never true for developers. Professional developers always look at somebody else's code and change it. This is how we built the web. View source, the ability to look at a web page, see how it was built, copy it, make it your own, is how we built the web. We can do the same thing on mobile. It's very hard today. It's very hard to look at Angry Birds and understand how it was made. It could be better. So our goal for the users is that we want them to feel proud that they made a, an app. So whether that's a 12-year-old or a 20-year-old, somebody who's never made an app, we want them to feel a, a sense of um, accomplishment and they want something that they want to sh share with their friends. We are just starting. What I'm going to show you is just the beginning of a project that we started a few months ago. Um, and the reason I'm here is that we want many people to help us make it. Because if A, we can't do it alone, and B, we need more voices to help shape the project. So first demo. Um, oh, this is a small screen. <laughs> How am I going to squeeze? There we go. New app. So here is the, um, the basic template for App Maker. And the idea is you have a model of a phone, and then you have a list of components on the left. And to add a component, and I'll talk about components in a minute, to add a component to the phone, just click on it. And then it just shows up. A component is just a unit of visual logic inside of the, the, the phone, and it does something. So buttons, you click. And when you click on a button, it sends a little message. You see that it goes out. We think of components very much like Lego blocks that you connect together. So you can connect this thing with the next component, like say counter, and counter takes a message and counts up. And so when I click, the message goes out, it comes here, and it gets counted. So I go one, two, three, four. And this, these colors is how we connect the components together. It's a very simple model for connecting logical bits together. Almost everybody we talk to can understand that very easily. It's visual, it's interactive, there's no typing, there's no syntax errors. 
And so the only real control you have is you can have to make sure that the colors line up. So if I make this thing send a red message, then this number does not go up because it is not listening on the red channel. If I change this one to be red, then they go up again. Does that make sense? The components can be very simple, like these guys, or they can be more complicated. So for example, here we have a component that we like called fireworks. And so fireworks, every time it receives a message, it shoots a little fireworks. You can also do, um, well, so this is one of the simplest apps you can do. And as I said, we want to be able to go from having, creating an app in five minutes. We've already designed the app, but you can actually get it all the way installed on the phone. I won't show you on the phone here, because it's hard, but I can publish to the simulator. So if I go here, and I publish, I'm going to call it Fire. <coughs> Whoops. Do we have a bug? We have a bug. Why do we have a bug? Button, fireworks. Let's try this guy. Ah. So what happened to my publish? My publish isn't working. All right, publishing isn't working. That's really annoying. I'll get back to that. As I said, this is alpha software. So the question is, can we make these apps in such a way that somebody like Sophia will actually like it? And you can, we can show you later. You can talk to other people here. It actually does work. I think I broke it this morning. <coughs> um, you can make more complicated apps. So here I'm going to make another app. Whoa, oh. I'm going to make another app um, which has multiple screens. So for example, I will make a, a header, which I'm going to call chat room. I'm going to add a chat window, which I'm going to pick a room called campus party. <coughs> and then I'm going to add a text input that I call a message. And so now, if I say hello, I get a little chat room, and every time I say something, it shows up in the chat room. Now, this chat room has somebody using a Russian screen. <coughs> if, I, um, if I want to, I can make it more customizable by having a settings page. So the way you do that is you create another page, and over here, you put a header. And this header will get a message and say on purple. If it gets a purple message, then we'll navigate to that page. And so all we need to do to do that is to create a button that we're going to call settings. And we're going to make it on purple. So if I click here, it navigates to that page. Does that make sense? That's how you basically connect pages together. And here I could do things like having various kinds of settings. And then I can go back to chat, go back. And if I say go back uh, on orange, and I make it so that this thing listens to orange, then my, I can go back between just like that. So just using the same channel system and color system, I can do navigation. In fact, there's very little limit to what you can do with logic with these colors because all the intelligence is inside of the components. So what's interesting about this is that the, the process from the user's point of view is you find an app you like, you look at it in the designer, you modify it, you play with it, and it's really fun. Like, it's, it's not work. <clears throat> and then you publish it and you share it with your friends. That's the, that's the cycle we want to create. So for Sophia, what we're hoping is that she might find a chat app, and she will decide that she's going to make a version of a chat app that's just for her friends, a safe place for her and her friends to talk. Or maybe she'll take a photo blogging app, and because she's interested in fashion, she's going to make an app that is about her, her sense in fashion, those kinds of things. We want people to be able to take simple apps, modify them, republish them, 
and feel like they made an app. So for success, like, what does that look like? Why are we doing this? There's multiple possibilities. Maybe Sophia actually just feels like she enjoys having that app, and she feels empowered, and she feels like she has the ability to control that mobile phone. <clears throat> maybe Sophia is curious. Maybe she's like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. Maybe I want to learn more. So maybe that's how she learns that she might even be interested in programming. So maybe she goes from App Maker to learning about HTML and JavaScript. Or maybe she makes the really good success is she actually makes an app that is interesting enough and shows her talent enough that it helps her get a job. That's sort of the long-term vision. The reason AppMaker works is that because components are very simple concepts, I can show you in a few minutes. Channels are surprisingly simple and good way to connect them. And we take a lot of very modern web technology and we hide it. We hide it from the user, right? You can, you can learn to make an app without having to learn all of the details that are inside of it. <clears throat> so what AppMaker is not is also important. This is not a tool for developers. This is a tool by developers for non-developers. It's also not a tool that's trying to teach programming directly. We're trying to inspire people to learn programming, not to teach programming. And it's clearly not an app to make any kind of app, right? If you're trying to make a, an app for a big brand, they're not going to want to use AppMaker. Those are not our customers. So what kinds of apps are people going to make? We don't know yet. This is just beginning. But our focus is on making things that are fun, useful, and personal. And things that could become more personal because somebody take it and made their own. <clears throat> so for example, Andre uh, yesterday uh, made an app to save his cat. So uh, Andre found a cat that was hit by a car. And the cat needs surgery. And it's actually going to be quite expensive. And so he made an app with a few components, a header, a picture, a donation button, and a couple other buttons so that people can donate to help fix the cat. Right? It's, a, it's a simple app that takes a few minutes to make that would be very, very hard to do with traditional app technology. You can imagine millions of these kinds of apps. If you want to give money for the cat, let us know. <clears throat> so what are these apps? These apps are made on web technologies. And so they work where the web works. They work really well on places where the web works really well, like Firefox OS or Android if you have Firefox for Android. But they also work on other places where there are web browsers. So these apps will also work on, on phones that have web browsers. And the better the web browser, the better the app will work. And then over time, as the web APIs become more and more dominant, they'll be available everywhere. But what's striking is that many people, when they use this, they don't actually care that the app is not in the App Store. They just want, they are very happy to have an app on their phone. That's actually much more important than where it came from. So um, how many people here are developers? OK, so a few of you. So I'll just give you a little bit of an insight into how these components are built. Uh, we, Bobby did a workshop yesterday. And if you want to ask questions about the components, we're happy to sort of talk at depth. Um, but the, one of the things that happens when you want to make an app is sometimes you want to make an app, and the component you need does not exist. And so you need to make your own. And so the way you do that is you create these components for AppMaker, which are a kind of component, or a kind of web component, which is a new standard that's being built as part of HTML5. And so it's really just a web component that has specific information about the channels and the details of how you edit one of these things. So as an example, yesterday I made a component to show images from Flickr. <clears throat> a component is just an HTML element. So just like you have image or div in HTML, we make components for fireworks that I showed you or chat room that I showed you. And here I'm just going to make a Flickr one. So a component has a, a set of definition, which is just HTML and JavaScript and CSS technologies that web developers already know. And in that, you put the logic, like what the component does, the styling, what it looks like, the channels, which messages it's getting and which messages it's sending, and then the attributes, the properties of these, 
of these components. And we do that completely in open source. So you go to GitHub, to the repo, and you fork the repo. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. <coughs> you create your component, and then you teach AppMaker about it, and then it's available inside of AppMaker. So this, for example, is the Flickr component that I did yesterday. It has a few uh, messages that it can listen to. You set location, search, fetch a, new, fetch a new image. It shows the image, and then it can send the image to some other component. Um, so what's interesting is that a web developer can make a useful component in about an hour from scratch. And a, component, a web developer who's actually been comfortable with AppMaker, it's more like five or 10 minutes. It's really very simple. And the thing about web developers is that there are millions of them around the world. Also, many of them are quite excited about the idea of democratizing mobile apps. Right? They, they see that if we can make it so that millions of people can make apps, then the web is going to be a much stronger technology for the mobile world. And so I think we have the promise of much more accessible app authoring. This is early days, but it's quite promising. I want to point out, AppMaker was localized in Brazilian Portuguese of all the languages first, thanks to Panagio and Andre. I think Andre is still sleeping after the party last night. But thank you. That was very important. <clears throat> and so now I'm going to talk about what we need. I talked about Sofia. And Sofia is in a suburb of Sao Paulo. I don't know what she needs. We don't know what app she's going to want to make. We don't know what components she's, she's going to need. So we need partners around the world to help us figure out in different communities what kinds of apps people want to build. <clears throat> we also need many more components. We just have the first few. We have, a, we have about 20 components. We're probably going to need hundreds or thousands of components. So we need people like you, if you're a web developer, to write some components. We also need contributors for everything, for translations, for marketing, for development, for testing, et cetera, et cetera, for user testing. And so we're going around and asking people if they want to get involved. Like, this is very much the same model that Mozilla used for Firefox, that Mozilla used for Thunderbird, that Mozilla used for Firefox OS. This is how we try to make the internet a better place. So in the future, we're going to have more apps, we're going to have more components, we're going to have more languages. We're also thinking about how to make it work so you don't have to use a computer to create the apps. Maybe in schools that you can use tablets. Maybe you can just make an app straight on the phone. There are a bunch of hard questions to, to solve that, but that's the kind of thing we want to do next year. <clears throat> this is a big project, and it needs help. There's many ways to help. You could run a usability test. Um, this is in Portuguese. It's a test that you can run to give us feedback about how AppMaker is working. Is it working well? Does it make sense? So if you have time, write down that URL and follow it up and just fill in the questionnaire. It doesn't take very long. It'd be very helpful. You could, if you make a video of an app and post it, we get to see you learn how to use it and other people get to see you make an app. So that's something we're encouraging people to do is to make videos of themselves showing their app and then showing the world. Teach somebody. It's amazing how um, useful and fun it is to actually teach somebody how to use a piece of software. It's very easy. You can teach people who don't know anything about programming. If you're more interested and want to spend more time, you can make components. We have a uh, place to start. It's called Start Here. And if anybody's interested in that, Bobby, Panagio, I'm happy to walk people through that. Of course, you can file bugs or fix bugs. You can write a blog about AppMaker in your language, whatever that happens to be, or whatever you think is right. This is a, an open source project, and many people can bring their own perspective. <clears throat> so thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Um, I hope I have time for questions, and I hope I have somebody who can translate questions if I need translation. Questions? Perguntas? Any questions?
Alo, alo. You can ask in Portuguese. No questions. Okay, thank you. In English or Portuguese? Uh, sobre o design do aplicativo, tem como personalizar uh, o posicionamento dos componentes? Um, right, so for the English speakers in the room, uh, the question is whether... Um, this is tricky. Um, is it possible to customize the layout of the components in the designer? The answer is no. Uh, the answer is currently we are deciding to make the layout very, very simple so that it is uh, very flexible. Every component can work with every other component. If you make it so that components can be different sizes, then you have layout, which is a really hard problem, especially responsive layout. So for now, we are, we are making it very simple and rigid. Um, we may have to change that, but for now, no. Any other questions? OK, I'm going to ask. How many people here develop Android applications? How many people here have developed mobile web applications? Cool. <clears throat> the, um, what would it take for you to want to create a component? N not for your use, but like how, oh, no, let me ask a different question. How many people here have contributed to an open source project? So it's interesting. How many people who um, are the people who make apps who don't work for an open source project? What would it take to get you to contribute? I can't hear you. Time, time. Yes, well, time. It's not that hard. It doesn't take that long. All right. No questions. Okay, thank you.